Hi everybody, thank you for watching. So today's video is going to be a YouTube didn't make me buy a video. Basically, I'm going to be talking about some of my makeup products that I bought without any sort of guidance or suggestions from YouTube. So I've seen a couple of these videos floating around and I thought that they were really interesting. I've done the YouTube made me buy it. I've done YouTubers made me buy it such as Jaclyn Hill and Carly Bible, but I've never done one talking about what YouTube didn't make me buy. Basically like the not hyped makeup products, the unhyped makeup products, however you would want to say that. So just makeup products that I wasn't encouraged to buy from watching other YouTube videos. I thought this would be interesting for a couple of reasons. One, um, because sometimes the unhyped makeup can not get as much recognition, of course, as the hyped makeup. But then another reason I thought this would be interesting is because as I was thinking about this video and going through my collection and writing down what I would talk about, a lot of my unhyped makeup products is from when I first really started buying makeup and building my collection. I thought maybe that might be interesting for some people to see. Um, if you would kind of want to see my thought process of what I was buying when I was first starting out before I had a YouTube channel. I've said it in a couple of my other past videos, but if you're new to my channel, I really didn't start wearing makeup until about a year before I started my YouTube channel. I started watching other YouTube videos and learning how to do makeup. Makeup. The reason that I never really was doing a lot with my makeup is because I didn't know how to do it. I was always very confused. Things didn't seem to work out for me. I wasn't sure how to apply things. So I really am completely self-taught and self-taught because of YouTube. I did not wear makeup at all before then, no, but a lot of times I was just wearing like my friend's makeup like when we would get ready in college. I mean, I maybe had like an eyeshadow palette and that's 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 pushing it. I just use a lot of my friend's stuff so and kind of see what I bought in the beginning. So a lot of it, I do have high-end stuff, but a lot of what you'll see will be the drugstore as well because obviously as a beginner, I didn't think it was a really good idea to go out and buy a ton of really expensive stuff. So I thought maybe it would be an interesting type of video. Like I said, we always hear about the really hyped up makeup products and the ones that everyone is super excited about. So I thought it would be fun to do something a little bit different. So yeah, if you would like to see the makeup products that YouTube did not make me buy, please keep watching. So this was one of my first like higher end purchases and I remember buying it from Ulta and I found this illuminating tinted moisturizer from Stila and I thought, okay, because I love moisturizing. I moisturize all the time. I think it's very important in your skincare. And then this one said it was illuminating and tinted. Like, okay, I'm gonna go ahead and purchase it. It says it's in shade 01. I'm not really sure what that means because I actually used this once in a video. I either used it or talked about it or something and I couldn't even find it online. So I don't know. I think I found something like kind of similar to it, but it was a totally different packaging. So that just tells you how old this is. And it's like down here. Like I used it very, very often. Like I really got, I got my use out of it and it's SPF 20 and it's oil free. I mean, I thought this was a really good product. Like I thought that I really stumbled onto something great and I still, I stand true to that. I wore this so freaking often. I loved it. So before I really started getting into makeup, I really didn't wear a lot of foundation. I was going to wear foundation. Like if I was going out for a nicer event or just, I don't know, doing something fun. Again, a lot of times I was borrowing foundations from my friends and just making it work. What I did, but I did have a couple of, you know, face products that I really did like. The Tinted Moisturizer was definitely one of them. But I have, this was like one of my very first, uh, like face makeup products that I bought. It's from Alme. It's the Smart Shade Smart Balance Skin Balancing Makeup. So this is what it looks like. I have it in shades 200 and also 300. This is 300 and it feels pretty much empty. But I have it in two different shades. That's how much I really, really enjoyed it. The 300 is for like more in the summertime when I'm more tan. The 200 is, I don't know, the 200 would probably be too dark even now. I am so pale. Come on, Summer, am I right? But I really like these and I can, again, it's so funny how when I think about it, I can recall buying it. Like I can truly recall buying this. This was back in the day when I worked for a VA hospital. I remember I worked in the mental health clinic. So that was even 
long time ago guys I can remember being in Walgreens and deciding to buy this getting back to the office because like I went on my lunch break I went back to the office and I put some on my hand and I'll see if I can show you guys when you put it on your hand it's actually like white but then when you rub it out it does like blend in to your skin color but I remember doing that and putting a little drop on my hand and it coming out white and I was like I bought the wrong shade like I just bought like white stuff for my face what is this like what did I do wrong then the gal that was working with me was like no blend it into your face and then it'll you know shade match that's what it says on the bottle I was like oh well would you look at that so yeah this one has been in my collection for a very long time like I said I have like multiple shades of it I use this sucker so much and then the other face makeup product that I have and that I still really like I wonder if they still I think they still sell these but it's from Maybelline as well it's their dream fresh BB 8-in-1 beauty balm skin protector again I have a couple of these in my collection as well this one is actually I think this is unopened still this is in medium sheer tint but again so it's like a BB cream so it, it does give you some color like it, it really does help even out skin tone and I, I won't say I actually have it on my face right now I won't say it's like super great at covering up imperfections I actually think the all my does a better job of that but if you just put a little concealer over those areas then you're totally fine and good to go but I remember I bought it because I was like it does so many things lures imperfections enhances brightens adjusts to skin tone smooths hydrates it has SPF 30 and made with no oils or any other heavy ingredients I was like gotta have this and honestly I still love it I wear the Alme and the Maybelline a lot and even the Stila one still like I pretty much out of that but I will still wear those on days where I'm not doing my makeup in front of the camera like I'm not going to do an Instagram tutorial or a YouTube tutorial or, or anything like that I go with these guys because I still really like them so I, think I look so weird with my hair up like I never wear my hair up it's already falling out whatever I'm testing out a new shampoo and conditioner and it's doing nothing but making my hair like super staticky so it's oh my gosh it's so annoying I'm giving it one more shot one more shampoo and conditioner with it and then Ooh, if my hair is still staticky then no more no more but I just feel like I look I look funny a couple of concealers to talk about so one it's actually a duo it's a contour and concealer stick so this is the NYX sculpt and highlight face duo so I was just kind of browsing at Target one day and I found this and I was like huh I haven't heard anybody talk about this and I looked it up quickly on my phone and it said it was new and I thought Mm, okay I'll try it out and I really like this I don't really hear anybody else talking about this I don't see a lot of people using it but if you watch my Instagram tutorials I post one probably like five times a week or so I'll post a Instagram makeup tutorial I use this a lot I prefer the contour side so much like I love the contour side the concealer side is just too light for me like it doesn't actually really conceal much of anything for me it's much more of like a simply a highlight shade so sometimes I'll go in with the concealer to conceal my under eyes and then I can come in with this and use it as a highlighter sometimes it's fine on its own depending on what my skin's doing but sometimes I just need a little bit more oomph but the contour side is really good and I wish more people talked about this because I think it's awesome another concealer is high end so this is from Tarte. It's the Rainforest of the Sea Concealer. So when Tarte came out with the Rainforest of the Sea line, I was super interested about it. It got some hype, I would say, but I nothing that was like super overwhelming to me. And especially like I really wasn't hearing much about the concealer. I was probably hearing more about the foundation than the concealer. Going back and forth, like should I get the foundation or the concealer? Should I get both? I don't know what to do. I ended up just going with the concealer. And I really like this concealer. I also feel like not only did this not get a lot of hype, but I don't see a lot of great feedback about it and I think it's just fine. I know a lot of people complain about the scent. It does have like a paint scent. It does. I'll be honest. Like I don't love the scent either but once you put it on your face you don't smell it anymore so I don't know. The scent is fine for me. My shade is in light medium in case you're wondering. I know some people also say they don't like it because it's very liquidy. Like it's very runny. You can see that the best but like I mean it is very liquidy. Like it's not like the shape tape at all in the slightest um so some people complain that it's like too runny too liquidy honestly i don't mind it's more of a sheer concealer but sometimes i feel like i want that sometimes i don't like putting super thick heavy concealers on my under eyes and while i feel like this is more sheer i like this more than the nyx because the nyx to me didn't give a lot of coverage and this still does without feeling like 
like you're putting a lot of makeup on your under eyes because that's such a delicate area I don't like to like pack on stuff under there so I don't know I like this concealer just fine so moving on to a bronzer I have the NYX matte bronzer I bought this I believe like back in college when I was super interested in just being bronze like everywhere all over if you watch how I did my makeup in college it's it's not very pretty because I thought bronzer just like went everywhere and it doesn't once I start watching YouTube I learned very quickly like oh you don't put bronzer all over your face you only put it in certain areas that's good to know but yeah the NYX uh, matte bronzer definitely one of the first bronzers that I've ever purchased and I still have it like it's still going strong I have it on today I really like it a lot um, it's not my my favorite favorite bronzer but I still reach for it quite a bit and I still like it so this is one of my very first brow brow products that I've ever purchased and it was actually even I'm pretty sure before I started a YouTube channel even too I would always see like everybody doing their brows and I was like super confused like I don't understand so I was like I'm gonna go with the Maybelline brow drama because it was supposed to be super easy it's just a sculpting brow mascara I thought like okay how hard can this be so this is what the wand looks like it's what I have on my brows today I just comb it through again like I don't do my brows every single day I'm not a huge brow person and I just don't care that much about eyebrows. This was uh, one of my first attempts at trying to get into the brow game. I don't think it's a bad purchase at all. Like if you just want a little something something for your brows, I thought this was just fine. So this was a face product that I totally forgot to mention, but this is from Pure. Honestly, I don't feel like I need to like touch on this a lot because I have talked about this product a lot. It's been in favorites videos. It was in my ride or die. It was in my uh, Best of Beauty 2016. Like this is just one of my absolute staples. It's the 4-in-1 Pressed Mineral Makeup. I have mine in the shade Tan. I mean, you can see here that obviously I love it. I have a fresh one in my drawer. I think these are great. I started purchasing the purchasing these way before I even like knew of YouTube or anything. I've been wearing these since my college days, like very early college days. I've just been wearing this for years and I'm, I'm just, I'm not going to stop. I love it. Okay, so I have some eye products to talk about. So I have two eyeliners. So this one is from Rimmel. It's in the shade In the Nude. So this is what that one looks like. I actually bought this a while ago and I remember buying it because I was reading a article um, that was interviewing Blake Lively who's like one of my favorite actresses like ever ever and I said like what's one of your makeup tips and she said to use a nude or white eyeliner in your waterline because it'll make your eyes look bigger and it'll make you appear more awake and I was like nailed it got it okay I'm in college I need to look more awake very often I'm gonna go out and buy me a nude liner so this one was from Rimmel super affordable Blake Lively made me buy it thank you Blake so another eyeliner, I talk about this one a lot and I use it in a lot of tutorials. This is the Maybelline Master Precise Eyeliner. I really like this eyeliner. I didn't have any encouragement from anybody else to purchase this eyeliner. I did buy it after I started my channel, but I never really hear anybody talking about this eyeliner. I just saw it once again at a drugstore. I decided to get it and then it was, you know, the buy one get one half off or whatever for Maybelline and I was like, oh, I'll try out the eyeliner. I've actually repurchased this. I like it quite a bit. I thought it was nice for when I was still learning. And I mean, I am still learning, but I'm getting a little bit better maybe. Uh, doing winged liner because it was really precise but it's more firm and I feel like that's nice when you're doing a wing because you don't worry about like the the wand just like going everywhere like some other products can be so I like this one a lot I used it a lot I've practiced wing liner with it a lot I thought it was really good so I really do like this liner I've, I've repurchased it several times so when I was getting into makeup, I think this was after I started my, my YouTube channel and I was starting to do more beauty videos. If you don't know, I actually got on YouTube as a book channel. I'm an author, I'm a book blogger, um, I do a lot in the book industry and I decided one day to start a, a YouTube channel and talk about books and um, my blog always kind of featured beauty, um, like celebrity, fitness, fashion, just anything that I'm interested in was kind of on my blog as well. And I thought once I started YouTube, I was like, I could incorporate some beauty videos in here too because like those were some of my favorite videos that I was watching on YouTube was beauty. So I thought, I want to try it. And then we just morphed into a full-on beauty channel. I still have my blog. I still publish books and do all that. But my YouTube is now solely a beauty channel. But when I started, I was like, okay, people do like really cool makeup looks on YouTube. Like 
they do some cool stuff. Like I need to do cool stuff. I need to learn cool stuff and I need glitter. Like I definitely need glitter. So I went out and bought this uh, NYX glitter. So I don't know, looks looks like this. So I don't know, This to me this isn't like hyped makeup or YouTube technically made me buy it. I got it because I thought that I should have glitter in my collection, but uh, no one was like, hey, you really need to go out and buy those NYX liners. Like I really had never heard of them. I just remember seeing this at the store and being like, I need glitter, I'm gonna buy this. It's affordable, fantastic. Unfortunately for me, it really didn't work out because I have super sensitive eyes. Like there's certain mascaras that I can't wear, liners I can't wear. Glitter is especially tough for me. It just irritates my eyes so bad and this one did. I think I've worn this a total of like two or three times ever because it just hurts my eyes so bad. So that, that really bummed me out. But, but yeah, the NYX liner was one that I bought trying to improve my makeup game. And unfortunately, it just ended up hurting my eyes. Then another product from Maybelline. This is the Color Tattoo Eye Chrome. And my shade is in Beige Luster. So this is what this one looks like. And then this is what the wand looks like. It's almost kind of like a lipstick, kind of. Like a lipstick wand. So I bought these. These were a pretty new release. Like I feel like I just purchased this maybe six months back or so something like that i don't feel like they got a ton of hype though um i just bought it because i thought that they looked really interesting i was watching like the maybelline snapchats and they were swatching all of them and i thought like oh wow those shades look really pretty and i was at target and i found some and i thought i'm gonna purchase it and see what it's all about i actually really do like these i wear these pretty frequently and a lot of times what i do is i'll just put this all over the lid and sometimes I'll leave it at that, but most times what I do is just take like a really soft transition color and buff that into the crease and I'm good to go. One of my like favorite super easy eye looks. So yeah, these color tattoo eye chromes, I might actually pick up pick up more of these because I really do like them. Okay, so keeping on with eyes, another Maybelline product that I bought, not because of YouTube, is their 24 hour color tattoo leather. This is what it looks like. I don't know if you can see it the best with the glare, but it's just like a little eyeshadow pot. Looks like this. The shade was in Vintage Plum. I love purple on the eyes. Like, I love purple with green eyes so much, so that is why I went with the purple. I really like this. I know I purchased this a long time ago, and it's pretty dried out, but what I would used to do, like, this was when I was kind of ish starting to get into makeup but not doing the best job yet is i would literally just stick my finger in here and put this purple all over my eyes called it a day we were good to go put some mascara on and voila so yeah uh, that's what i used to do guys so the very first eyeshadow palette i think this is my very first eyeshadow palette my first high-end eyeshadow palette that i ever purchased was from too Faced. So this is the Natural Eye Palette and if you guys have been like purchasing from Too Faced for a while you would probably know that this is pretty old packaging so this tells you like how long ago that I did purchase this palette. This palette for a long time. If I can show you a close-up you can see that there's <laughs> especially this shade right here. I loved it so when I purchased this palette oh it also had like a little slide out drawer and it came with a brush and I, I used that brush because like who had fancy brushes back then? Certainly not me. But a lot of times what I did is I would take this middle color, it's called Push Up, and put it all over my eyes. And there you go. Like when I first started doing makeup, I had no idea what like a transition color was. I didn't know what a blending brush was. I didn't know how to blend eyeshadows. I would just take that Push Up and put it all over my eyes. Sometimes I would do the same with this Honey Pot because that has a huge dip in it as well. Or sometimes if I just wanted to be a little sparkly, I would take this middle shade right here and just put it all over my eyes and put a blue eyeliner over it. Again, if you guys watch how I did my makeup in college, I talk about my blue eyeliner and how often I wore that. But I used this on my eyes today just to do something different and fun and I just wanted something a little bit more casual. I'm not feeling the best, of course. Story of my life in the winter time. I feel like I'm always sick. This palette, it came with these little cards that like would help you do makeup looks and you know obviously I really needed that back in the day. I mean I still wouldn't complain for them now but yeah this is my first high-end eyeshadow palette. It's from Too Faced and the natural eye palette. So cute. But another eyeshadow palette that I bought, this is like one of my more like recent purchases. I think I purchased this this past spring or summer. But it's from Tarte Cosmetics and it's the Styled by Harouche palette. 
So this was a palette that I saw it coming out. Like I saw, you know, news about the release. This is what it looks like. It has a mirror as well. And I immediately got really excited for it. I remember actually mentioning it in maybe one of my very first Will I Buy It videos and being like, I really want to buy this. Like I'm so attracted to the shades in there. I love the big blush. Like I just think it looks really cool. $30 didn't seem like a bad price to me. And even still now, I really don't hear a lot of people talk about this, which surprises me because it's in collaboration with Styled by Harouche, who's like a super well-known makeup artist. Like she's always hanging out with the Kardashians and things like that. So I'm like, why was this palette not more hyped up? But I absolutely love it. It was in my Best of Beauty 2016 video. I'm actually giving one away in my Best of Beauty 2016 giveaway video. The shades are beautiful. It comes with six eyeshadows and then a monstrous blush, which I love. I love the colors. I love playing with this. It's smaller, so it's easy to travel with, and I travel with it a ton. I don't know. I don't know what more I could say about it because I feel like I talk about it a lot, but super good eyeshadow palette, I think. And then this is a, a fun little palette. I bought this after I started YouTube, and I, to me, this isn't a hyped up product. I bought it because I was like, I really think I like that Benefit brand, like things that Benefit were coming out with, I liked, and I was able to try a few things from them. I remember one of the very first things I ever tried from Benefit was the Their Real Mascara. Like I had bought a, a full size of it, and I really liked it. And this kit came with a like deluxe size, of the their real mascara and I was like you know what I'm just gonna buy it it was like 20 bucks on Sephora one time that I saw it and I was like I'm gonna buy it like it looks so cool it's called the bronze of champions and when you open it up it has all this fun stuff inside I thought this box was such a steal I still think that like I still reach for this so often so it did come with the their real mascara I've used it up because that's how much I loved it uh, it comes with a little deluxe size of the what's up highlighter it came with a cream shadow a powder shadow a hula lip gloss which I didn't use because I'm not a huge lip gloss person and it's pretty sticky and then also the hula bronzer and its own little brush I just thought this would be a really cool way to try out a lot of things from Benefit because they were one of the very first brands that really like was on my radar when I first started my YouTube channel and thought this was a good way to try out a lot from them. I was really happy that I bought this box but yeah this definitely wasn't like a YouTube maybe buy it kind of box but I just wanted to be able to try more Benefit and I'm obsessed with sets. <laughs> I love buying them. Okay, we are almost done. Hopefully I'm not making this video too long. That's just comical when I say that because most of my videos are long. I love it when you guys tell me on Snapchat that you look forward to my long videos. I appreciate that so much. But I wanted to talk about some brushes. So before I really started getting into makeup, I thought I would share what brushes that I would buy and it was hands down e.l.f. brushes. You could get these at Target, you get them at the drugstore, I could even get them at my local grocery store. It sells, you know, it sells makeup, but it sells e.l.f. And the e.l.f. brushes with the white handles are like a dollar, and the ones with the black are two dollars. Like for someone who's just learning makeup and, you know, kind of confused about it, not really sure what to do, spending a dollar and two dollar on brushes is a great idea. This brush is still something that I use every single day, the e.l.f. small tapered brush. I use it to set my under eyes and I've also used it for highlight. I love this brush, $2, one of my absolute favorite brushes. Um, so I just thought I would mention that like when I was starting to get into it and really like trying hard at it, I was like, I know that I need makeup brushes. I can't keep applying my eyeshadow with my fingers and just putting my foundation on with my hands. Like I need to get makeup brushes. It was e.l.f. all the way. But then one makeup brush that I like, I thought it would be fun to share with you, like one of my first higher end makeup brush purchases that wasn't like Morphe or Sigma or BH because I feel like a lot of those um, YouTube did make me buy them. Like Sigma and Morphe are super talked about. BH I bought hands down because of Carly Bible. She was always talking about BH. But this is a brush that I purchased all by myself. Nobody convinced me to buy this. I was at Sephora one day and I saw this brush and I thought, I'm going to buy that brush and I'm going to figure out what to do with it. Like I, I really didn't know what to do at the time, but I thought, okay, I'm gonna get this. Like I knew I wanted to buy a high-end brush, but I couldn't pull the trigger and buy like a $40 brush at Sephora. Like I was like, that's that's too much for me. So I bought this little brush because obviously it was less expensive, but I was like, I'm still doing it. I'm buying a Sephora brush. I'm, I'm gonna get it together. So this is the Pro Airbrush Concealer, the number 57 brush. This is what it looks like. And you guys, I am really happy to tell you, I use this brush pretty much every single day. Every single day that I'm doing my makeup, I am using this brush. So like, what a good 
first high-end, I'm gonna pick a brush out all for myself purchase because I love this brush. This brush goes everywhere with me. I do not travel without it. And like I said, I use it every single day. I love this brush. The last item that I want to talk about is lipsticks because of course I have to mention some lippies. And it's so funny because I was going through my collection and I was like, yeah, most of these are YouTube made me buy it, definitely. And I was thinking about it and I was like, why are, you know, why is the majority of my collection all like YouTube made me buy it or hyped up makeup products? Like, what did I wear before I started the YouTube channel? Like, what, what lipsticks did I wear? Oh yeah, I, I wore Maybelline. Or all Maybelline. I only grabbed out three to like be my example, but I have like a whole drawer full of Maybelline lipsticks. These things are amazing. I did not need anyone to tell me to buy these lipsticks. I discovered them all by myself at the drugstore and they're just, they're bomb. They're affordable, they're easy to get. They have so many different shades. They have different finishes. I discovered these by myself and I think they are amazing. I recommend these all the time. If someone tells me, hey, I want, you know, a drugstore option or an affordable option, good lipstick. I don't like liquid lipstick. I don't want a lip gloss. Like, I just want a good lipstick. I'm saying Maybelline. I love these. And yeah. YouTube did not convince me to buy these. All right, guys, that is gonna be everything for my YouTube did not make me buy it video. I hope that you guys enjoyed this video or maybe found it somewhat humorous. You kind of got to know a little bit about me and when I was starting in my makeup journey and how I was building my collection and even heard some embarrassing makeup stories that I decided to share with you guys. So I hope that you guys liked it. I thought this would be fun just because I really like seeing the YouTube made me buy it and the specific YouTubers made me buy it videos. I'll leave my videos linked down below as well if you guys want to catch those. So I thought this would just be another fun spin on those types of videos. So I definitely encourage you guys, like let me know in the comments down below, what do you have in your makeup collection that YouTube didn't make you buy? If you do have a channel, I hope that you make this type of video because I just think it's really interesting. So I hope that you guys liked it or found it fun. Please give me a thumbs up if you did enjoy it. Please make sure to also subscribe before you go so you'll get notified for my future videos. And I'll catch you guys real soon in my next one. Bye.